From every angle, this thing's hot. Wrapped. It's all really nice. Azimut yachts have been having a cracking run in Australia this last little while. Um, and I think I know why. I think, I, I think there's a method to the madness, but stay to the end of the video if that's of interest to you. Today, I'm, the, I'm on the Azimut S6 Sportfly. Dan Jones is my name, welcome to Dan's Boat Life, and this is the walkthrough. If you're interested in a test drive of this video, follow the link that comes up on your screen now. We've just had a ripping good time, 36 knots top speed. This thing is a sport yacht. Uh, but this is the walkthrough and that's what you came here for. So I think considering uh, that I'm at the back of the boat, we'll start at the back of the boat, then we're gonna make our way all the way around. Um, we're gonna cover the decks, we're gonna go upstairs, go right through the interior, and uh, we will also check out the engine bay that's going to be at the end of the video, so stay tuned if that's of interest to you. Um, 60 foot of boat, 30 tonne of boat, triple motors. This thing goes like a bat out of hell. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Um, it's gorgeous from every angle. Uh, it's a real head turner, and it's got lots of good tech. If you're, if you're into your good tech, this is a boat to pay attention to. Um, what do I mean by that? I mean carbon fiber topsides, carbon fiber transom, um, basically keeping their center of gravity low. So when all of this up here is built from a lighter weight, stronger material, which is carbon fiber, um, you lower your center of gravity. So check out this table right here. I'm feeling that that is as light as a feather. So that's, that's the telltale, which is beneath the white skin of the superstructure. So that's what gave us really an exhilarating ride. This, that, this is a lot of fun. For a 60 foot boat, this thing is a lot of fun. Um, but what does it give you? It gives you a big, family, friendly, spacious, luxurious powerboat. Um, so yeah, let's check out this area. Um, starting here, I'm gonna make my way around. Um, got a little isotherm fridge just here. Nice upholstery, there's covers for all of this. So you just stay out there, Andrew, and try and keep everything in shot so everyone can see. Um, but you're gonna get like eight, 10 people here. We've got some drink holders here and here. This table just flips just this way. That doesn't flip the other way. So you can put probably four, maybe more table settings just there for lunch. This looks like it's fixed on a beautiful stainless steel uh, pedestal. And I've got teak throughout the cockpit here. and as we make our way forward. So moving my way around, there is storage underneath these here and here. And this is designed to flow straight through onto the sun lounge at the back of the boat. So we will be checking that out in a tick. I might have to take my shoes off for that, but I wanna show you this area. So just come in here, Andrew, and I, we can just try and check all this out. This is your stairway that goes up to the sport fly. So just pay attention to this. Here and here, you can actually undo this and actually hinge the stairs out of the way and then essentially turn this area into what it would be like for the coupe. So that's the only real difference between this and the coupe version is this here, which does sort of disappear out of view. But behind these stairs, we have an operatable barbecue just here and we've got a little sink just there. Below, we have a fridge just here with a little freezer drawer and a neat, nice positioned bin. So that's a dual bin just there and I saw some more of these on the inside of the boat as well. So Barbie station, drinks, and you can also flow through from the interior, which we're gonna do in a tick because I wanna make my way around the outside of the boat whilst this weather is lovely. So, um, just here on the port side, we've got the stairs, we've got the barbie station, we also have a wing station. So we'll, we'll cut to that, Andrew, just try and keep everything in shot. Um, and you've got your, uh, your bow thruster, your joystick, your engine controls, nice and hidden. So you have three options 
to drive this boat from. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sort of make my way here, just keep it all in shot as best as you can. And so we have side access door just here. So that gives you nice little bit of side access there from the dock. We have a quick anchor windlass, um, which is serving as a stern two, like Mediterranean mooring style. So you can pull your lines in here, tension them on the winch there, and then secure them to this cleat. In here, a little bit of storage. I can also see a manual bilge pump, and that looks like possibly um, fuel or bilge, I'm not sure. This is Fireboy. Uh, manual release just here and that button just there is for the operation of the winch. I'm looking at courtesy lights underneath all the stairs as well and before we go down I'm just going to test out this uh, sun lounge for you guys so just get all that in shot there. Andrew, so just to give you a perspective of how large this is I was flying my drone on and off this before and like literally nothing is hindering the access there was so much space but you know four, five, six people could hang out up here and have a good time. You do want to have this here because it's a little bit of a drop down to the swim platform on the back of the boat. So that would be a safety issue. It's also worth noting um, that the design of the roof finishes here. So people sitting on this back seat here, they are going to be somewhat protected from the sun, but not really from the rain. So um, that's why you have the inside part of the boat to, to get out of the weather if you need to. Now, don't get too close just yet because I want to um, operate this, uh, this transom garage. So I've got drink holders on this side, same again on the other side. Just in here is a swim shower. So that's going to be a hot and cold swim shower before you board the boat. Um, and what I can do by pressing this button here is open up the stern garage. So these two controls here get you into the dinghy garage and then this one here is for the dinghy, and this one here is for the drop-down platform. I'm not going to drop that down. Um, and it's also worth noting, we're in a wavy anchorage here today. It's quite rough, but we've got the gyro on. So we can come in somewhere close, reasonably exposed, and still appreciate, uh, appreciate it a lot more than what you'd be able to in a boat without a gyro, basically. Okay, so I haven't put that up the full way. We've got the kid and doggy door. You come down one, two, three teak steps. You've got a stainless cleat just here. So just, you'll have to come down low, Andrew, but I want you to be able to appreciate this. You're gonna get a decent size dinghy in here, guys. And we're just using it for storage at the moment. It's a brand new boat, so there isn't actually a dinghy on board yet. But you can see it's got the winch. We've got the rollers to deploy the dinghy and we would drop this transom platform just here. Um, when we're going to deploy it into the sea. So that's super handy and it keeps the looks of the boat um, as you would wish because you, you don't have a gorgeous boat like this and then ruin it with a dinghy. Okay, going up the starboard side, you could do a passerelle on port. Nobody does that in Australia. This is the shore power connection just in here. And then I'm coming up on this side. This is a good little storage space for, for goggles and fins and that sort of thing when you've been swimming. And this door goes this way. And then just in here, Another convenient little storage area, good for ropes, just good for ropes. We'll leave that up for now. So same again as we saw on port side, we've got the winch and then we've got the cleat just here if you're pulling yourself into the dock and then operating this side door is done like so and the button is on the deck to operate that. So coming up one, two steps up onto the side deck, so you've got a grab handle there, the logo is in carbon fiber and stainless steel looks pretty cool. I think this is where I need to also apply my sunnies. Now just check out this detail here guys. This is where they've exposed the beautiful carbon. That's really, really sexy. What I like about that is a little bit of carbon's fine. Too much carbon would require maintenance because the UV would start to eat that up in time. So little highlights is great. And then you hide the rest underneath the paint, which is kind of sensible. So. Let's move forward and see what's under here. That's diesel tank, so about 2,600 litre tank is my understanding. And we will be checking out the engine bay at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. This is just all the gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I've just been perving on it from the drone. The Italians, they get the lines really right on their boats. Um, and from every angle, this thing's hot, like it really is. So making your way up the side decks, so I've got a midships cleat just there. You've got a small side opening helm door and then you come up to the bow. So just come up a little bit further, Andrew, and just 
keep all this in shot so everyone can appreciate it. Don't get too close. I just want everyone to see this is what a 60 foot boat is all about. You know, we've got a massive sun lounge at the back of the boat and another massive sun lounge here. And if you go for the sport fly, we have another one upstairs, which we're gonna to get to in a second. So essentially we got our anchor locker on starboard just here. It's quite a deep anchor locker. I'll just cut to shots just so nobody gets seasick with the camera. Um, that's quite a deep anchor locker. Gal chain. I'm sure you can do stainless if you wanted. A quick windlass just here. You can operate it from here or from the helm as well. We've got an aft opening, so aft facing hatch just there, just going down below. And these stainless pads here, here, and then there's two more aft, they are mounts for a big sunshade. So there's going to be legs, boom, 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 which then enclose this whole area. So it's, it's usable in the middle of the hot day as well. Um, one thing I don't get is why that they've joined the stainless here and here. Uh, that's definitely not a styling thing. I have no idea why Azimut decided to do that. It's not noticeable until you get up close, but anyway. Um, I can see the big stainless steel um, rub rails for the rope next to the cleats here and here. And the design of the bow of this boat is absolutely gorgeous. It, it's a flat stem at the front, and then it goes to more traditional sport yacht underneath. I'm sure that flat stem is nothing to do with the hydrodynamics. I think it's just looks because it's quite high off the waterline. Now, Andrew, when you're turning that, try and turn it a little bit slower. Otherwise, we might make people seasick. Um, so, yeah, it goes from flat stem to quite a deep, aggressive V, which it must be carrying quite a way below the waterline because I could feel it. It was really capable, solid kind of hull when we were rolling through the seas, which was great. Um, so I'm just going to quickly sit on these seats here. This is, I found this area really handy. So when we were pulling out of the marina, um, you know, you want to have one person moving around the boat with a roaming fender. So the skipper can be at the flybridge, they can be at the wing station, or they can be at the lower helm operating the boat, getting it out of the dock. And you want to have one person ideally just walking around, communicating, looking for dangers and dropping a fender in any areas that could be uh, at collision risk essentially and having this clear walkway allows you to check port and then go and check starboard move forward and aft and you've got clear line of sight to the helms person and you can just do your job a little bit easier but then also from a social perspective that's great and then from a landing perspective that's fantastic a couple of handholds here and there and obviously you can protect yourself with the sun now Two windscreen wipers, they got built-in washers. That's the spotlight mounted just there. And then you have a fixed sunlight forward, but I did notice that there is a retractable sunshade downstairs. So you don't have to have the UV coming through there if that's not something that you wish to do. Um, this is the midships cleat on port that we passed on starboard. Let's move our way back. Just go nice and slow. So. I feel, you know, I feel safe. Sure, there's gonna be boats where you feel safer, but this is um, so goddamn gorgeous. I kinda of like the, all the lines and, and how they've done it on this boat. I wouldn't change a thing. It's, it's, it really is striking from the drone. Diesel filler number two, that tells me there might be two uh, diesel tanks. I don't know, and we will find that out. So, next thing we're going to, I think, Andrew, I'm gonna grab the camera off you, and then you're gonna follow me up what we're going to do is check out upstairs. So if you just position yourself in the corner, mate, I reckon we can show everyone. Look at this view, guys. How good is this? So you just go back in that corner and let's just try and show everyone what we have here. So obviously you can go for the coupe or you can go for the sport fly and this is the major difference. So if you appreciate a bit of wind in your hair, if you appreciate having another zone to entertain from, and if you appreciate the extra visibility that it gives you from driving or parking from up here, um, then you wanna go for the sport fly. Um, yes, there are possible, you know, you could consider a flybridge to have some downsides as well because you've got to put extra covers on and it's another area to keep clean. So 
If, if you're a person that gets bothered by that, then go for the coupe. Um, if you want the extra social space, the extra usable space, then this is probably gonna do it for you. And the looks, in my opinion, uh, this is one of the really best looking flybridges uh, in this size range that, that's out right now. Uh, but anyway, um, we're on, Andrew's on the Sun Lounge, so I won't focus on that just yet. Why don't you get all this in shot as much as possible, just stay out a little bit and try and get as much of it in shot so everyone can see. Um, but we've got port side helm. So down below, the main helm is on the starboard side, the flybridge helm is on the port side. We also have port throttle and we had starboard throttle downstairs. So not too difficult to get used to, but it's just worth pointing out. We have this design here, which is very ergonomic from a skipper's perspective. Okay, I'm gonna go around this way because that was too narrow a gap for me. So, flip up bolsters on the seats, um, nice elevated position, and because of this design here, throttle is really well within reach. So you can adjust the seat forward and aft to suit you. You've got a little bit of foot room just here. The adjustable uh, steering wheel just here, which is quite a large Azimut branded steering wheel, leather wrapped. It's all really nice. We've got a single screen here for a chart plotter. We've got another space just here for your uh, Volvo Penta Diagnostics. And then we've got VHF down here. We have a bow thruster, joystick, throttle, remote control for the touch screen, a single drink holder, Fireboy system just there, and even a fridge next to the, next to the navigator seat. So that's pretty cool. And a drink holder for the navigator. So um, let's just cover this bit so you can not fall over there, Andrew. So another little, just little, little tidbit, I really like the radar mast on this boat. Um, it's gorgeous. Uh, the, the coupe doesn't have this one. I don't know why, because this is very sexy. I feel like on the coupe, you could just balance it out with a couple of, couple of domes on either side, so you could still make that look cool. But this is great. Um, don't know what's in here. Oh, little esky. That's handy. Uh, they've thought of everything. So the cushions are angled at the back. There is a bimini which folds out and then retracts forward and it's completely out of your line of sight. And then space wise, you'll get eight people up here, no problems. Um, obviously this door here guys will close. So grandma's not falling down and breaking her leg uh, when you're trying to show off from the flybridge. So pass me that camera, let's go downstairs. Now one thing that's worth noting guys, these stairs, I'm gonna go down the wrong way, but I recommend you go down facing the other direction because this step right here is a little bit shallower and that could be a safety risk if you didn't know what you were doing. So you just wanna be um, sort of attentive and alert to that. Now, this is the engine room access just there, which we're gonna do at the end of the video. And then I think it's time to take my shoes off, give the camera back to Andrew, and let's just soak all this in. So, it's very nice. It's got a, um, it's got a, a bit of a minimalist vibe, is the first thing that's sort of hitting me. As you come in actually, the, the roof, you don't need to film it, we can cut to that Andrew, the roof uh, uh, above, um, the cockpit area has got some carbon fiber kind of looking trim and then some strip lighting, which just looks cool. The doors um, sliding, by doing them in the black, they kind of disappear from your line of sight. So um, this is them fully concertinaed to the fully open position. Obviously they, they close up to here. And then for privacy, you have pull across curtains from either side. Um, but yeah, this, this, this is cool. So that lounge comes around to this level and then the interior lounge uh, meets up at the same level and in she comes. So, so come in and join me. So you go from the black trim on the ceiling into a nicer whiter trim. This is like a material sort of um, textured material up here. And we've got a combination of down lights and strip lights. So obviously you'll be able to operate them one at a time to create whatever vibe you like, but it's a, it's a, a, a really good combination of materials and, and colors, I think. It's, it's minimalist, it's cool, and it's functional. So let's go from port, and what we'll do, we'll make our way around the boat like this. So you just stay out as much as possible and try and 
um, capture everything. So, okay, one, two, three, four shelves just there, fusion stereo unit. And then as you enter on the port side, this is, I don't even know what you call, this is like a, a laminate, it, I'm, I'm not sure what you call this, but it looks cool. But this lifts up and that gives you access to your 240, uh, okay, 24 volt DC. Okay, and our shore power. So 240 and 24 volt just there. This is a good place for throwing some keys just as you board. So you could switch all the systems on just here, empty your pockets, put some keys and bits and pieces in there and you're right to roll. I can see some switches just there for lights and then I can see some climate control next to that. I've seen one of these Vera Frigo fridges before. I think this is a fridge, not an ice maker. It is. Okay, there's fridges dotted all around the place in convenient places. And decent amount of storage in that one. And these cupboard doors feel like they've been optimised for weight as well. So um, I think as I'm thinking about all of that in the topside construction, which is why we noticed uh, the exceptional performance today. Okay, so I've got, um, this is like a little overhead just design, which gives us storage space for a couple of little bits and pieces. And then in here, now this is like a marble or some sort of stone, uh, could be fake stone, could be marble, I don't know. That's just a little storage area. I noticed below that the, the, uh, the base removes and you get access to the fridge motors, which is handy. I like being able to get access to important items for servicing, that sort of stuff. But making our way around, we've got a Millet. So this looks like a one, two, three, four, I'm guessing, burner just there. And then we have a fridge below here with, uh, you know what's good to see as well? We've got a proper stopper on this. So you've got to twist the stopper so these drawers won't accidentally open underway. So that's another Vera Frigo fridge. And this looks like a freezer drawer below it. So that's a decent size. And then on the port side to that, we have a neat little bin just there. And then here's your cutlery just here. And in between the fridge and the stove, we got the dishwasher. That's very neat. That's a Millet dishwasher. And then, once again, Millet stove. Is this one of those convection oven things? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not up to spare and all that stuff. But single stainless steel sink just here. So we have a little prep sink out there next to the Barbie and a main sink in here. So you could throw a few dishes and things just after lunch in there if you needed and obviously then they can go straight in and stack up the dishwasher. Um, I, I would probably put food in this big fridge and not put any drinks in this one because we have so many drinks fridges dotted around the boat from the cockpit to the barbie to the flybridge. You're not really struggling for needing to go and grab a drink so I reckon that's how I would manage this part of the boat instead of um, getting too complicated with drinks in there. What do we got here? Oh, this is lovely. Now, now come and have a look at this, Andrew. Uh, forget the port side, but look how neatly they've done all this. Every glass has got a custom little um, foam padded timber designed holder for your glasses. I like that, that's cool. Now, going forward, um, I, I like seeing the, the darker textures forward of the helm. That's very sensible. We'll get to the helm in a sec because I want to finish off what we're looking at here. The flooring is a practical flooring. This is like a, a lighter faux timber of some sort. Oh, now come and have a look at this. This is lovely. This is good to see. I love it when they think about all these little details. So all your plates have a place. They're all held in with foam padded little holder thingamajiggies. And then, oh, look at that. We've even got the Azimut logo on here. Here's your little picnic platter thingies. So yeah, this is cool. This is cool. Everything is ready to go. And being Italian, we've got our mini coffees, like awesome. Actually, where would the coffee machine go on this boat? Um, is there a 240 plug somewhere? I feel like you would have, that's one of those pop up. Is this, that's it? Yeah, yes, okay. That's your power. Okay, so the coffee machine's gonna go here or here. And because it can't be an Italian boat without coffee. So awesome, that's cool. Now let's just go back and out and let's just sit on the lounge and see how comfy this is. Oh, that's nice, good couch. So soft, you could fall asleep on this 
at any time of the day, I think. Um, it's quite deep, so like I've got short legs, so I'm not a very good judge, but big people are still gonna be comfortable. And this backrest, it's one of those ones where you, really, you wanna lean back and put your arms here and just be comfortable. Let's check out this table. So this electrically goes up and down. This is that same textured finish that I saw there on the port side. So that matches quite nicely. And it's gonna be a practical finish if you're using it for lunch. And then you can open it up and this is how you do your primary dining. Here you go, so that slides and meets in the middle. So th this is great. You can do uh, some people dining outside, some people dining inside, or you could bring the whole party. Uh, a party of four would be really, really comfortable at this table, probably one place setting, another one, another one, another one. And then I guess if you had some director's chairs, you could squeeze a few people in on that side, but maybe not enough space for all of your, your uh, plates, depending on how big your lunch is. So that's cool. Um, but I think another thing I'm just thinking as I see this, if you're doing like, uh, like multiple, you know, entrees and all that sort of stuff, you could put, you could lay a bit of food out over there because you've got all that usable space there and the meals can kind of get served and consumed here and then stuff goes, the dirty plates go over there, the, the fresh meals get laid out there. People can even shuffle through and you could lay all the food out and uh, serve yourself and then come and have a seat. That, that often works well on a boat. So that's cool. I think they've, they've thought of that. I can see an air conditioning control here. I've got some blinds which pull forward, which we're gonna need soon because this sun's getting a little bit punchy. All right, let's have a look at the helm. So focus in on the helm, Andrew, and let's appreciate all this. I am gonna say this is probably the most fun I've had driving a 60-foot sport yacht this year. Um, this boat goes, it heals, it's, it gives you a bit of a kick in the pants kind of thing when you, when you put the throttles down. So if you're looking for that experience, definitely put this boat on your, um, on your short list. And from an operational perspective, my visibility was good. I, I felt in control all the time and the boat goes where you point it. Some boats um, want to wander off in their own directions or they will wallow over the swell and you're not exactly sure how you're gonna come out the other side. This boat did not do that to me. So anyway, this display here, we've got a uh, Raymarine plotter, another one here, and a Volvo Diagnostics in the middle. We've got some air conditioning displays just here. We've got the compass up the top. So starting at the port side below the display and making my way to starboard, I've got windless up and down, chain wash, bow lights, battery parallel uh, one, battery parallel two, spare and spare. That's on the port side to the helm. Below that, that looks like a card for your chart plotter and your fireboy system on the port side. The steering wheel is a little bit bigger than you see on a lot of boats. So this might be a custom azimut one, I don't know. It looks like it's stainless steel construction. We've got the azimut logo in the middle and it's leather wrapped, brown leather down here. I've got my uh, Volvo Penta ignitions, now three motors. So three ignitions, three starts, just down here on starboard. And then on this bank just here, I've got horn, wiper port, wiper starboard, wiper wash, mute. What would you be muting? I have no idea. Um, the throttle, uh, nicely positioned as well, set back from the helm, and you can do your trim tabs with your fingers on this particular boat. You've got station control for going up and down, and then you've got cruise control, single lever, uh, throttle only, which is revving in neutral, etc. I've got a control pad just here for operating the touch screen, so if you prefer to do that, you can. I've got my control for the remote spotlight, bow thruster is forward of the joystick. And when you're operating a boat like this, you wanna be doing it from muscle memory. You don't wanna be looking at the controls. So the reason why the base of the joystick has a bit more substance to it and the base of the bow thruster is a square, it's so when you put your hand down and feel the different shapes, you will notice and realize that, oh, I'm on the joystick or I'm on the thruster, because the best thing is you wanna be keeping good situational awareness and doing it by feel instead of by looking. Now I've got some phone charging just there. I've got two drink holders at the helm. I've got my uh, gyro just uh, on starboard and then anchor light, navigation lights, helm lights and spare just here, VHF, 
down low on the starboard side. So um, I really do like these uh, this helm seat. So it's got the electric forward, the electric aft, up and down. Short man like me loves that. And the flip down pedestal. So you can put your foot there and sit up like so. And like when you're on a bit of a trip, this is gonna be a great spot to sit, relax and observe from. Um, so yeah, super comfy. Your partner can just sit next to you. That seat is not electrified. That is just standard. And I can also see uh, even a 240 plug down uh, low at their feet. The other thing worth noting, this window electrically pops up and down. So if you want a little bit of fresh air, or if you just want to yell at your mates up on the foredeck, you can do that. So yeah, really nice. I guess the only thing I would add if I was designing this myself would be a couple of armrests because I like to feel like I'm a captain of like the Enterprise when I'm on boats like this. And uh, But anyway, maybe you won't need to be bothered about Starship references. Um, so come on downstairs because this is a cool interior. First thing I want you to note is this leather wrapped hallway is the kind of feeling that you get as you go downstairs. Now, if you hear um, a whirring noise, that is the gyro. It's not too intrusive, but we are in a proper wavy spot. And without it, like it just wouldn't be possible for us to enjoy uh, this location. So I, I really, I do think it's a good option on a boat of, of this style. Um, so welcome to the VIP. Isn't this lovely? A um, couple of things worth noting. You can sit up in bed. You, you know, some people can almost stand up in this bed. There's a lot of space um, in terms of where your bed level is to here. So that's great. You've got a couple of reading lights on either side. Some cool textured finishes down here and some down lights just there. That's the opening hatch or one of the opening hatches we saw on deck. And it's also got some sun block out um, if required. Um, now, I'm just going to work my way around. So this is a good little storage space, maybe for sort of towels or t-shirts. Got um, a concertina blind that goes down here. We have a fixed window. This is one of the gorgeous windows that you will see from my drone shots, but an opening window as well. Remember this area is air conditioning. It's air conditioned, but uh, if you, that's not your vibe, you can go opening, opening, opening. So you can get proper cross flow ventilation in a cabin like this. Now, let's just search our way around. Okay, this looks like the place to put your phones and wallets because you've got this stainless wrap around. And it's worth noting this finish here matches what we saw at the little key spot as we entered the boat and on the main saloon uh, dining table as well. I think, I don't know, I think this whole bed is fixed in place and I don't think it lifts up. I'm not exactly sure. Oh yeah, it does look like it lifts up. It does look like it lifts up. I can see a thing under here. So let's have a little go at that. Oh, oh yeah, on gas. Oh, look at that space. You could hide illegal immigrants in there. Not that not that I recommend doing that, but that's, that's huge. Okay, so what would you do with that? If you're going away on a holiday and you board the boat with luggage and your friends come on an airplane, that's where you store those bags. So you'd tell them, um, put your bags on the bed, put everything in the cupboards and then stow them down below. That's, that's the sensible solution for a storage space like that. And here is where you put everything. So you'd roll up your t-shirts, put them there, put some shorts here. I've actually got my bags in here and my camera gear, but proper hanging gear, being Italian boat, I think you've got to have like a sexy Italian blazer. So when you go out for dinner, you look cool. So the other thing, um, we'll have to cut to a shot of this. So just stay there, but there is a full stand up mirror just there. So you can check yourself on the way out the door. We've got climate control just here and kind of mirroring everything on the port side that we saw on starboard. And let's just have a look in here, a smaller. So we've got a little bit of hanging storage with some shelves behind it. Please excuse the covers uh, just there. I just didn't have anywhere else to put them. Um, and a couple more uh, shelves down below just there. Um, we do have access. So that's your main door just there. And then this is private access to what is um, the day head, but it's also your private head. So the loo is behind this door here. We'll cut to a shot of that. And then you've got a proper separate stand up shower and a very stylish vanity. Like down here, you've got this stainless steel ledge 
all those fancy soaps would go well right there. You'd have to have brand name soaps in a boat like this. You can't do cheap stuff. No home brand stuff. Thank you very much. It's got to be something something cool. And then you got your little soap dispenser here. I don't know where you put your toothbrushes, but oh, you probably put them in something down here. And then this looks like one of those mirrors that you'd see in an actor's change room or something. And then you can plug in your shavers and hair dryers just there. And the shower thing goes up and down. So uh, tall and shorter people can still be comfortable. And I think I see some air extraction at the top of the shower, which is quite sensible. And yeah, looks like an electric loo. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna open this door. You come through this door, Andrew, and let's go into the guest cabin. So now we're coming to the starboard guest cabin. Okay, so just stay at the door and try and capture as much of this as you can. So this is where the kids would stay, but it's not, adults would be comfortable here too. Like, let's, I'll go to the end of the bed actually. So that's a decent amount of space on a single bed. And I got another one on that side too. I don't know whether they slide together. I can't really tell. So um, if they, no, I don't think they do. I think this is two singles because this thing would have to be movable if they turned into a double. So this is storage for bits and pieces. I got some uh, 240 and it looks like lights below there. I got some reading lights there. You could still sit up in bed here, I reckon. And this looks like it pulls down and there's either access to the helm or storage behind that, I'd say. And here's another little storage spot. So two people, one of you can take one each. And then in here, you've got quite a decent amount of hanging storage for so you could do all your hanging stuff there put your shoes down there you got a full stand-up mirror just here so that's cool now come on back so one two three four five steps up to the main uh saloon and then this is the master so come on down in here down one two stairs just kind of stay in there and capture all this this is bougie this is cool. So this is where the statement that is azimuth, these windows, is visible and enjoyable from down below. That's when you see a boat belting along doing its thing down the harbour and you see those windows, that's how you immediately know it's an azimuth. And, um, and yeah, this, this is really, really gorgeous. For a master cabin, it's full standing headroom all the way around. Let's just cover this side first and then we'll move our way across. You know, this is fancy. I would actually, I would use this area as a bit of an office. You know, if you had guests on board and you just wanted to come down and do some emails, what a great place to do it because you've got an excellent view from both sides. You've got privacy. You've got space to put your laptop and your other bits and pieces if you need. Um, you're listening to the gen set and the gyro right now, but if that was an issue for you, just don't go to a wavy place like we have and just drop anchor and not worry about it. Um, that opens, that one there, the blinds here drop up and down so you can have privacy at night time. You can't see in in the daytime. And let me just explore this little thingy jiggy, see what's going on. Okay, deep, pretty deep shelves there. A couple of drawers here on soft closes and once again, this same texture, I don't know what we're gonna call this, um, zebra look, I don't know, um, with stainless steel surround, so nothing's gonna fall off. And is this fixed? Yeah, that's fixed. I see a 240 plug just under there, so once again, perfect for charging uh, equipment like computers. So, let's um, have a look here. That's almost walk-in wardrobe, like I'm just gonna do this to give you some perspective. It's not a walk-in wardrobe, but it's pretty much big enough to be a walk-in wardrobe. One, two, three, four shelves there. Five, six, hanging rail just above me here. It's lit and we've got some more storage. So you could, you could line it up with your shoes, everything you need really. Um, it's gonna go quite nicely in there. Little bit of storage next to the bed. Really beautiful statement piece, this bed to me. Like this is what the Italians are really great at. And let's just have a look around on either side. We've got once again, this sensible 
uh, stainless wrapped feature on the both sides of the bed. We've got stainless around the windows. There's your blinds on that side. And we've got a big fixed mirror just here. I'm not sure if that does anything. No, that's all just part of the, part of the design. But I think we do have drawer. Oh, nice little, lovely little pillows there. So that's good for some extra bedding and bits and pieces at the end of the bed. So I think I've covered everything. That's, oh, the loo, which is locked. So we'll have to cut to a shot of that, but you do have your own private head and shower accessible from inside this cabin. And before I forget it, here is your washer dryer just in here. So it is a boat for holidays because that's where that's located. Air conditioning control just there. So come on upstairs, let's check out the engine. Okay, so we're coming up the stairs. I just wanna point out another little feature, which I just like, cause it makes the space feel big. This is like a floating little piece of cabinetry just here. So it just makes the area feel a little bit bigger and, and it tells you that someone's put a lot of love and attention into the design of the thing. So, engine bay. Um, what we might do is pass me the camera. So this is your quick access. You got this ladder here. You go down either side, pass me the camera, and I'm going to bring you down with me, guys. So, there you go. That's the gen set, the Kohler gen set on starboard. We've got the batteries below that in their own boxes. You can see a lot of the main battery stitches on the forward bulkhead and the Fireboy system. I'm just gonna try and take you around uh, from starboard to port. So, here's your first, IPS 700, and note that that's mounted a little bit higher than your mid IPS, just there. And then when you come over to the port side, once again, it returns to the same level. So what that's doing is actually getting that mid, mid propeller deep down and low and giving it the best access possible to avoid cavitation and give you some efficiency. So you got your fuel distribution, conveniently mounted and all individually marked. And then you've got your raw water as well. So you've got fuel, 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 and you can see you can swap over on each filter and then your raw water pickups, one, two, three, all sensible, centered, and easily accessed. Now, it is worth noting that the, the headroom is on port and starboard, but not in the middle. So the reason that being, is because we have a dinghy garage just there. So it is what it is, that's the price you pay. But you're not gonna be down here anyway doing this service work, it's gonna be your mechanic. So here we are on the port side, that just looks like some refrigeration to me. And then let's just crawl on down one side just to give you a feel. And I might turn the camera around in a sec to give you uh, an appreciation of the room. You can get behind and access all of these drives, it's totally doable. And I'm just gonna turn the camera around now, and hopefully you can see that I, I can actually stand up here, and through here, I can also stand up here, no problems. So through here, down either side you've got headroom, just not above the middle motor the price you pay for awesomeness. And here we go, it is two tanks. I can see them, one on either side. So they are mounted in between the engine bay and the master berth. Well, there you have it, guys. That's the, um, the Azimuth S6 Sport Fly. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I, I hope you did too, and hopefully you, you learnt uh, a, a little bit about this beautiful piece of kit. Um, What's my wrap up? If you want a really true sport yacht, this is a boat you need to focus on. Um, why do I believe Azimut is having so much incredible success as they are at the moment? Um, it's an amazing brand. It's got really good pedigree and performance to match, but the group that's backing it up. Um, 
I have a little bit of experience with these guys, Dalbora Marine and the Dalbora Marina Group are my old tenants. I know them very well. And when you bring all these elements together, uh, a group that has really some of the best marinas up and down the East Coast, managed by boaties, and Dalbora Marine, who have now expanded, and you've got to say, been incredibly successful um, with the amount of knowledgeable people that they have brought on board. It's just a, it's just a winning formula. Um, so yeah, you marry that with the Azimut brand, I think this, these guys have got a really positive future. Um, you know, what's that gonna do? That's gonna help your resale. So just think about that. Anyway, doesn't end there. If you're interested in the test drive of this boat or more content like this, follow the links that are coming up on the screen right now. Dan Jones is my name. This has been Dan's Boat Life. See you on the next one.